Hey guys and welcome! For today's video I took a closer look at all of the ammunition types of Battlefield 2042 because I always had the feeling that the stats and descriptions aren't very helpful. And it was indeed quite interesting to experiment with this. So here's what I know about the different ammo types so far and if you have anything to add from your own experience, feel free to write it in the comments down below. It will surely be interesting for others as well. In general, there are five different types of ammunition available for most weapons and another five types for the shotguns. For assault rifles, SMGs and so on, you can either use standard issue, high power, close combat, subsonic or armor piercing ammunition. And for each of these ammo types, there are three different kinds of magazines available. The standard mag, the extended mag and the drum mag. But of course, there is not every type of ammo or magazine size available for each weapon. For this video, I compared all ammo types to the standard issue rounds, as these are available for almost all weapons and often the default ammo type. I took a closer look at how the reload speed, the fire rate, the accuracy, the range and the time to kill changes with the different kinds of bullets and also made different bullet penetration tests for the armor piercing ammunition. But let's start with the general difference between a normal magazine and the extended and drum mag. The only difference here is the reload speed and the amount of bullets. The reload speed is slower the higher the amount of bullets is, so the extended mag is slower than the normal one and the drum mag even slower than the extended mag. And that's also the only thing that this lower handling stat shows. That doesn't have to do with an increase of recoil or a lower accuracy. Also range and damage stays the same, it's only about the reload time. The only thing you might recognize is that you will have to control the recoil for a longer time because of the higher ammo capacity, but the recoil in general is not increased. How many bullets more each magazine type has depends on the weapon. For SMGs and assault rifles it's usually 10 to 20 bullets more and for marksmen or sniper rifles it's only between 2 and 5 bullets more. So depending on the weapon you use you should always check if the higher amount of bullets is worth the longer reload time. Now let's have a closer look at the high power rounds cause there's a bit more that changes. In general this ammo type only increases the effective range of your weapon and not the overall damage. That means you will still deal normal bullet damage on a range where you would already need more bullets with another ammunition type. So for example with the AK-24 you need 5 bullets to kill an enemy on a range up to 50 meters, no matter if you use standard issue or a high power magazine. But with the standard issue you will need 6 or more bullets when the distance is getting longer. With the high power rounds you will still only need 5 bullets. Of course this increases as well at some point but these are ranges where you usually work with a sniper. But of course that also means that within a range of 50 meters the standard issue is as good as the high power rounds. And that's nice to know because this ammo type also comes with a lot of disadvantages. Directly compared to the standard issue magazine you can see that the vertical recoil is much stronger. The horizontal recoil however stays the same. Also the reload speed is slower which is getting even worse when you use the extended or drum magazine and in addition the fire rate is lower. But this doesn't make the high power rounds useless, even though it might sound like this right now. Especially for weapons like the AK-24 or the SFAR that have a very long range that can even be extended with a long barrel and a high zoom scope. For these weapons the high power rounds work well and have a much more consistent damage across all ranges. And especially on the huge maps of Battlefield 2042 you find yourself in a lot of gunfights on mid and long range where one bullet more or less can make a huge difference. So if the high power rounds are useful for you or not depends on the weapon and your playstyle. Same with the close combat rounds. These are actually the exact opposite of the high power ammunition, cause close combat comes with a lower vertical recoil than the standard issue, a faster reload time and a higher rate of fire. But they also have a lower effective range, which means that you need more bullets on long range to kill a target. But what's interesting here as well is that before the damage drop off starts you need the same amount of bullets that you need with the standard issue magazine. So the damage in general is not reduced. I tried this with the MP9 this time and I needed 5 bullets on a range of 30 meters and 7 bullets on a range of 50 meters for close combat and standard issue. On 50 meters the bullets did already deal lower damage with the close combat magazine but at the end it was still enough to kill an enemy with the same amount of bullets. But if I would have been a little further away I would have needed the extra bullet already. The close combat rounds are also available as extended and drum mag that also have a slightly longer reload time than the normal magazine. Compared to the standard issue the close combat ammo also comes with a higher amount of bullets in general to compensate the lower effective range and the more bullets you need on range. So far not too much of a surprise. But an ammo type that really surprised me are the subsonic rounds. 
These are only available as normal mag and not as extended or drum mag, but always come with the same amount of bullets as the standard issue. So when the standard issue of a weapon has 30 rounds, then the subsonic mag will also have 30 rounds. And that made me wonder if the damage of this ammo type is even reduced compared to the standard issue. And no, it's not. The subsonic rounds have a similar range and damage drop off and you also need the same amount of bullets for a kill. Which is quite interesting, cause these rounds also come with a lot of advantages. They massively reduce the muscle flesh of your weapon, which means that your line of sight will stay clearer when shooting. And they also have a reduced tracer visibility. That means your bullets will be less visible, so the enemies can't pin down the direction you are shooting from. And that's a great advantage for flanks, especially when combined with a heavy suppressor, for example on the MP9. In addition, the magazine has a faster reload speed compared to the standard issue, even though the description says the reload speed is slower. But in fact, the reload speed is identical to the close combat magazine. The only thing that is indeed lower is the projectile velocity, which means your bullets need a longer time from your weapon to the target. So when shooting at a running enemy, you will have to pre-aim a bit more. But in general, the subsonic rounds seem to be worth trying, especially on weapons with heavy suppressors that won't get you spotted on the minimap when shooting. Next up are the armor-piercing bullets that are also available for most weapons and the anti-material rounds that come with the NTW50 in two different versions, a normal and a high power type. For the normal weapons, this ammo type reduces the reload speed and also the damage to infantry. Both is true. You will always need 1-2 to two bullets more when shooting at infantry. Also, the size of the magazine is smaller than the other ammo types. But I don't think that this is what you would use this ammunition for, cause it's actually made to penetrate vehicle armor and light materials, at least according to the description. And that's also what it does pretty well. Much better with the NTW of course, but that's also because of the higher firepower of the rifle. But even with normal weapons and this ammo, you can still deal good damage, especially to light vehicles or give them the last few bullets when they are low on health. Destroying a vehicle completely with these rounds is another thing. With the NTW and the normal ammo, you need 10 bullets on a light vehicle. With the high power rounds, it's only 8. So that's still okay considering that there are many more gadgets that deal damage to vehicles. But with an AK-24 for example, you deal about 1 damage per bullet. So with all 64 armor-piercing bullets that you can carry, you will only get a vehicle down to about 40% health. That doesn't sound much, but this ammo type is not made to be able to destroy a complete vehicle in one go. It's only an addition to M5 and explosives. But since the description also says the bullets would penetrate light materials, I thought I'm gonna try to shoot at some materials. So I shot at one of those red steel doors, at containers and also at Dorsa's shield and iris deployable cover, to see if there would be any kind of bullet penetration and damage dealt to the player behind it. And I was honestly a bit disappointed because there was absolutely nothing. No bullet penetration at all, no matter which type of ammo or weapon I was shooting. I would understand that the armor-piercing bullets of the normal weapons don't have any bullet penetration, but the high caliber of the NTW-50 that penetrates a tank's armor and destroys the engine inside the tank, this should have at least a small effect on the shield, the cover or that door. But like I said, there was nothing. Of course, the bullets were dealing damage to Iris' cover itself, but also a lot less than I expected. Bullet penetration might be different on some of the portal maps where you have more wooden elements, but I haven't tried that out. I only focused on the 2042 environment. So the only difference between the types of armor-piercing bullets is the amount of damage it deals to vehicles, which is just a little for the normal weapons and quite a lot for the NTW-50. And last but not least, let's have a quick look at the available shotgun ammunition. This might not be interesting for everyone, but some of you asked specifically about this, so I tried to find out more as well. For the shotguns, there are 5 different ammo types available. The buckshots number 1, 4 and 0 and the slug and flechette shell. The buckshot number 1 is usually the default ammo type, so I compared the other types to this one and it's also available as extended or drum magazine for the 12M auto. But what's the actual difference between buckshot 1, 4 and 0? Well, in reality, this number defines the size of the single pellets and how many pellets one shell has. But I'm not quite sure if this is also the case in Battlefield 2042. Cause here it seems to mostly define the kind of spread the pellets have. You can see this with the small symbol at the ammo type, but also when you compare them directly to each other. Buckshot 4 has a much wider spread of bullets and also comes with a faster reload speed and a higher fire rate, so it's much easier to hit targets on close range. But it also has a lower effective range, which makes these bullets not very useful on Battlefield 2042. 
The buckshot number zero, on the other hand, has a much smaller spread that results in a higher effective range. When it comes to reload speed and fire rate, it's pretty similar to the default number one rounds. And these buckshot number one rounds are basically in the middle of number four and zero when it comes to spread and range. So when you're playing a shotgun, I can definitely recommend to stick to number one or zero. If you want even more effective range and precision, you can also go with the slug shells that only have one large bullet and behave like the bullets of sniper rifles, only that their damage drop off on range is much higher. The last available ammo type for the shotguns are the flechette shells that contain a number of small darts instead of pellets. These are very effective against infantry, at least on close range, but just like number 4, they have a much lower effective range and also a reduced amount of bullets per magazine. So for really close range, these shells are great, but then again, not very useful in a game where most of the gunfights happen on mid-range. And that's it for today. I hope this video helps you to understand the different ammunition types of Battlefield 2042 and makes it easier for you to choose the right bullets for your playstyle. And if it does, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for more content like this. Until then, thanks for watching. I'm the Catwoman and you are awesome.